Hello and welcome back! Today on the menu we have tips, tricks and hacks that will really skyrocket your productivity in Apple Notes. Let's get started. The first I'm going to mention is Quick Notes. I use this trick every day to manage my daily log. Let me show you how. Apple Notes comes with a very handy keyboard shortcut which is Function Q or Globe Q. It will open a new Quick Note for you where you can jot down your thoughts. And when you close that note and you press the keyboard shortcut again, it will create a new quick note for you so you can record yet another thought. Now this is a standard way of using quick notes. However, I'm using quick notes in a slightly different way which I wanted to show you and I use it to manage my daily log. So what I do is this. I create at the beginning of a day a new quick note uh, with today's date and if I want to go fancy I can even add a little graphic to it like in this case something that I've created uh, with uh, canva.com you can do the same if you want and then on this quick note I'm gonna write down the things that I want to complete during the day so send an invoice to my client for example um, complete presentation record video about Apple notes and so on and then I can close my quick note and I'm going to get back to it when it's time to um, cross off these tasks when I've completed them. So if I close the note and I press the function Q shortcut again, Apple Notes is going to give me a new note, but I don't want that. I want to access my old note and to do so I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to select this option, always resume to last quick note. When I click it, Look what happened. If I press function Q again, my daily log is going to be resumed. And I can maybe check off one of these tasks because I've completed it. And then I'm going to close this note. And by the way, I can even close Apple Notes because the next time I press the shortcut function Q, my daily log is going to be resumed. And during the day, I add lots of things to this page. I may add um, interesting things that I've discovered. Maybe I bought something and I want to add some expenses. Uh, book. 30 euros and so on. So during the day I keep closing this thing, working on my stuff and then pressing my shortcut to resume and complete. And at the end of the day I will archive this note or do whatever I, I need to do with these things. For example, uh, put this in my file where I track my expenses and tomorrow I'm going to start a new quick note and do this thing again. And this way this shortcut becomes extremely useful on a Mac because your quick note with your daily log is going to be always one shortcut away irrespective of which app you're using. Next, smart folders. Let me give you some sort of a real real example. Let's imagine that uh, during the course of the year you've scanned lots of receipts into Apple Notes and maybe you want to use these receipts in your uh, tax return. In my case, just for the purpose of this dem demonstration, I've downloaded just some random uh, receipts from the internet um, but you may have a similar situation, all of them scattered across your um, Apple Notes. And look at the situation here, which is usually what happens. You have some receipts that are tagged or called with the name of the trip where you picked up the receipt. In other cases, they are named receipt. In other cases, they don't even have a name. In other cases, they have a tag attached. Um, maybe there is a name of the restaurant or maybe the supermarket where you got the receipt. So it is really a varied list of um, keywords that you've used and you want to rationalize it. You want to make sure that all the receipts that matter to you are actually pulled in time for your tax return. So what you can do is to use a smart folder. To create a smart folder you go there, new folder, you give it a name, I'm going to call it uh, MP Tax receipt. And I'm going to make it into a smart folder. Now at this point it's going to give me lots of options that I can use to filter down my content. So if I go here I'm going to say that all these notes must match all of the following filters. Filter number one is going to be the date. Every note that I've created in a specific range of dates I want to pull and these dates will correspond to your tax return. So let's say in my case, it's going to be from the 1st of January 2024 to the, to the um, 31st of December 2024. So anything that I've uh, added to Apple Notes will be uh, pulled. But that's obviously too much. 
So I want to add another condition, which is that I want to pull only attachments which are of the type scan. So every scan that I've created during this period will then be pulled by the uh, smart folder. Now, in my case, I'm going to make a small change and I'm going to pull photos because these receipts are actually images that I've downloaded from the internet. But in your case, in a normal situation, this would be scans. And if I click OK, look what happens. A new smart folder is created here, which is called tax receipts. And inside of it, you will find all the notes that correspond to the filters that we just um, created. Now, there are too many things here because in my case, I'm pulling images instead of um, scans. But the ones that I wanted to pull are here. What I can do at this point is I can maybe rationalize these notes, maybe adding specific tags. For example, this one doesn't even have a title. I can go in, I can give it a title, which is, um, I don't know, maybe receipt 2024. But more importantly, I can add tags. I'm going to create a new tag for this called NP, um, let's say, tax 2024. Now, this new tag is um, created. I can then go back and add the same tag to all these notes. Now, for example, this one, um, Pizza Hut delivery, and, uh, well, you can probably spot that there is a problem with this receipt. Can you spot it? Yeah, it is this one. How on earth can you actually eat an Hawaiian chicken pizza? As an Italian, I think I've got the moral obligation and possibly the legal obligation to tell you that I've never bought or ordered or eaten a pizza with chicken or pineapple on top. Anyway, jokes aside, you can go down into this thing and add your newly created tag, which was NP tax 2024. And you can do this thing for all these receipts. Of course, it's a bit tedious. We don't like tedious things. So the best idea is to select all of them. You go down here to your tags, to your tags cloud, which if you don't see your tags cloud, you can click on this little button here. And then you select all these notes and you pull them, you know, all seven of them to this tag. When you release, this tag is attached to all your notes. That's this one, for example, you go to the bottom and it's got a couple of tags. At that point, at the end of the year, when it's time to complete your tax return, what do you do? The best thing you can do is to leverage this tag uh, that we just created, the tax 2024 tag. So how do you pull all the receipts and all the files that have that tag? Well, that's really easy. With this tag cloud, you can go here, click on this tag, and all the notes across all of your Apple notes that have that tag will be pulled. At that point, you can open all these uh, notes and maybe send them to your accountant. Or maybe you share this note with them so that they can pull the information if they want. Next up, a little feature which I find useful. And it's the ability to see your notes in slightly different ways. So now we're talking about adding visually interest to Apple Notes. And um, I'm here in this folder, which is my digital bullet journal, um, something that I've described in a previous video. In this case, this is a perfectly fine list of notes. The standard way they appear as a list of, um, as a list of notes with just text. I've added some icons, as you can see here, to add some visual interest, but they are pretty flat. Now, let me show you a different way of looking at these notes, which is more visual, and that's the gallery view. If you click on this icon up here, you open the same list, the same folder, as a gallery. And you can see all your notes in, um, in the form of cards. Now, this is a more visual way of dealing with your notes, but as, as you can see, it is still a bit flat. I can definitely recognize my notes just by looking at them. So if I'm here and I'm looking for my habit tracker, for example, I can scan my notes and I can see that maybe this one looks like a habit tracker, and in fact it is, looking at the title, and then I can double click and open it. But if I go back, I'm going to show you the difference it makes if I started adding some header images at the top of my notes. So this is the plain version without images, and this is the version with headers. As you can see, I've added a banner, which I've created on canva.com. So it's a free um, web app that you can use as well. And then you can drag your image directly to the top of your notes. See that this is my habit tracker. Now, another very interesting thing that you can do in uh, Apple Notes is to look at the attachments view. This icon here is the attachments view. So if I click on it, as you can see, it's giving me the complete list of all images that are present in my Apple Notes. These are 
uh, images that I've downloaded from the internet, which I've used in one of my recent videos. Otherwise, they look like scans and you will probably find them in the scans folder. Because this is a useful thing that the attachment view does, is that it divides all the attachments by category. So you've got photos and videos and scans, maps, websites, audio files and uh, documents, which normally means PDFs. Now, with this attachment view, you can... Um, visually locate information that you need. If I was looking for this habit tracker, for example, I could right click and then I will have a few options. The first one is quick look. It basically shows me the image like this. And by the way, the same thing you can, um, you can achieve by pressing the space bar and pressing it again to remove it. The second option is that I can right click and open the attachment and it will be opened in whatever um, program you use to open those types of files. In my case this is a PNG and it's being opened in uh, preview on my Mac. But the third thing which is more interesting is that you can select to show in note. So this will bring me back to the note that contains that attachment. In my case the habit tracker. Have a look at my video on how I've created the digital bullet journal for more information on this. Now, as I said, the ability to format notes is very limited in Apple Notes. You can't really do anything fancy, which is a shame. However, there is another option on uh, mobiles, which may be useful to someone, and that is the option to change the background color of, um, of a note. So let's say that I am in my um, digital bullet journal folder, and... Um, which contains all my notes and I want to make one note stand out for whatever reason. So as you can see the background of all these notes is black but if I open one like this list of signifiers for example that maybe I want to recognize immediately because it's something that I uh, keep looking back at I can click on the three dots and choose the, to use the light background. Now this is going to change the background of my note and every time I look at the folder I'm going to go back to the folder this note will be highlighted with a light background. It is a bit of a uh, workaround, to be honest, to make uh, notes more interesting. But if you are specifically looking for a note and you want an easy way to locate the note, this could be uh, something you do. Unfortunately, this only works on um, mobile. So if you've got your iPhone, you will see it like this. But if you look at your Mac, it's not going to change the background color of the note. Something to bear in mind. Next up is an amazing feature which I consider to be a game changer and it's the ability to link your notes. This can transform Apple Notes into a personal knowledge manager. But having said that, the feature is not perfect. So let me show you a couple of tricks and also a couple of workarounds for some of the problems you may encounter. So one of the best updates we've got in recent times has been in iOS 17 when Apple Notes introduced the ability to link notes. So for example, I can have a note which is the beginning of my book and something happens here. And then I may have a new note which is the middle of my book. Something else happens here. And then I may have a third um, a part of my book, which is the end and the story ends here. Now I could, um, if I go back to my list of, if I go back to my list of notes, I can then link my notes so that they are connected. I can say something happens here and then this one points to the second part of my book, which is the middle. It's... Um, it's another note. To create a link, there is a very handy shortcut which is made by two greater than signs. So if I type this, I can then choose one of my existing notes. In this case, it's my middle. Okay, so when I click here, it's going to open up the second part of my book, which is the middle. And then I can do the same thing on this note. I can create a link to my end. So this is really convenient because at this point, if I go back to the beginning, I can browse through my notes in a way that makes sense to me. So the beginning is here and then I move to the middle and then I move to the end. Now, just um, as a little pointer, if I right click on the text, I can then choose edit link and I can give it a different name or use the note title as a name. Uh, I could, for example, change this to chapter two and click OK, and at this point, this link will be called Chapter 2. 
But of course, it will still point to the middle um, parts of my book. So this specific note. So, so far, so good. Um, there is just a little problem which, with this feature, which hopefully Apple is going to fix in one of the next releases. And it's the fact that the navigation is kind of broken. So you can only go in one direction. So for example, from the middle, I can progress to end, but there is no way to go back to the middle. So if I've navigated between several nodes um, and I've gone forward and forward and forward, there is no way I can then backtrack to the previous notes. Um, so if I want to go back to the beginning, I still have to go into the list of notes in this folder and go back to the beginning. So hopefully this will be fixed in one of the next releases um, because it's very convenient and it's something that in apps like Obsidian, for example, you use all the time. You know, the ability to go backwards and forwards, which is very common also to Safari and many other applications. Even Finder has a go back functionality. Anyway, there is a little workaround that I use in situations like this. For example, from the beginning, I may want to go to my chapter two, which is the middle. And what I can do with these links is that I can create my own backlink. So I could say that because I know that I'm going to land on this note from the beginning, I can create another link here, which is my beginning. So at this point, I can go forward to the end or back to the beginning. And if I do the same thing to my end story, I can create a link to my middle. So this way, I can navigate back and forwards between nodes. Another way to create nodes on a Mac, especially, is to highlight some text, right-click, and add link. You can also do this with a shortcut Command K. At this point, add link works in a very similar way to what I've uh, shown you before. You can start adding the first letters of your note, and then we can go to the beginning. Again, the text is something else. I can change it, or I can simply use note title. In this case, I'm going to leave the text because it's part of a sentence. And now my something else is linked to another page. In this case, my beginning. It's also worth noticing that if the note you're uh, trying to link to doesn't exist, Apple Notes is going to create that for you in the same folder where you are, which is very convenient. For example, in this case, if I want to create a different ending, which I can call alternative, an alternative end, see what happens. Apple Notes is offering you the possibility to create the note called alternative end. In which case, I click on it, the link is created, and the note has appeared here, ready for you to modify. Everything I said so far works in exactly the same way on iOS and um, and so on iPhone and iPad. However, I find it cumbersome that I need to uh, type on the numbers and then on the symbols and then type the two greater than signs to create a link. So I've created a text replacement workaround, which works this way. I type CCC and Apple, as soon as I press space, converts that into the symbols that I want. I then delete a space, pick the note, and I'm done. To create the text replacement, you go to your settings, you go to text replacement, and where it says text replacement, you pick a new one. The phrase you want to insert is two greater than signs, and the shortcut is going to be, in my case, CCC. It could be three Ks or whatever you want, something that comes handy to you and you're sure you will never include in uh, any word you type. And when you click save, this is going to be working absolutely fine. Next, the ability to move notes between folders. You probably know that it's possible to move single notes, but did you know that you can move several notes at the same time? Let me show you how. This is very useful if you want to move several notes on your iPhone. So let's say I want to move a few notes from this folder. I tap on the first and I keep tapping until it moves. I shake a bit and then with my other finger, I tap the other notes that I want to move. Then I can navigate back to the folder where I want to drop them. So that one, for example, or I can even go into another folder. I can create a new one, um, add folder. I'm going to give it a name, let's say logs. I'm going to save this folder and I'm going to drop these notes on this folder that I've just created. As you can see, all the notes are now here. The next thing you want to do is to put some of these suggestions into practice. So, for example, have a look at this video to see how some of these suggestions can be used to create a digital bullet journal in Apple Notes. For now, though, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.